Welcome in, everybody, to the second day, 21 hours in. I am working on setting up. I'm I'm at a shortage of uh, circuits, and you're going to say, what circuits? And, well, all the circuits. So I don't have enough reds because I don't have enough greens because I don't have enough reds and I don't have enough greens, so I don't have enough processing and all that stuff. So I've uh, put over at the main base here my passive providers. I've gone to the six six outloading uh, stack inserters just to get things out and moving faster. Not really a big deal there. But if we look and we follow this train, that one's going all the way down to red, which I've made room to make it uh, – to tessellate this some more and make it longer to make some more because – Things are going good, but I'm going to run out of green circuits, I'm sure, because if I come over to my green circuits, these boys are all just waiting on uh, – the trains are just waiting to fill up faster because I don't have enough to, like, fill these buffer chests up, which is okay. I mean, I'm still putting out – let's look. Production – putting out about 2.1 about 2,000 a minute. Yeah, yeah. And that hasn't changed in a long time. We've been putting out about 2.1 thousand, 2100 a minute for a long, long time. But that's just that's just causing me to not have enough to work with. Uh, if I come over back to the main base, um, my rocket, I'm at 92 out of 100. I'm going with three rocket things and three uh, three rocket parts and three low densities. And these, I finally have a few extras. Uh, speed modules in each of these which is awesome but I go over to where the speed modules are being made and these guys aren't all cranking all the time and as you can see here these are missing green circuits in these and these are missing red circuits in these so I'm just at a circuit shortage all over that's why I'm setting up over here this is gonna be some sort of smelting I think I'm gonna go ahead and once I go back to the main base I'm gonna grab well I'll, I'll walk and talk I'm gonna grab some landfill Uh-huh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Turn you around. Take me to the main base. Uh, I'm going to grab some landfill on me, but as you see, the circle here is only two-way. I'm going to come up. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to drop off, make drop-off points for all the ores that I will need. And then down here at the bottom, I will come down and have pickup points for all the ore that I need to pick up. Yeah. So that'll be... I was debating if I wanted to smelt in the mega base or smelt off... off off site. I think smelting off site makes more sense because and trying to keep it sort of in line with the mega base. So like this isn't too far off. It's just pretty straight line for them to just come right back into the mega base that I can have two iron trains, two copper trains. And then it's though I do I make green circuits in the mega base or do I make green circuits somewhere else? And that's where I'm also at right now. Where I've got the uh I'm using about 500 out of my 800 logistics bots. I've got the bots to make thing to make green circuits and things in base. And I'm also noticing when I look down, speaking more here, these assembly machines. Let's see. Let's look at the last one. You can see that it doesn't always have. Well, the the problem for it is that when I click on them, I can't click on them because I'm not there. But they don't have green. Uh, they don't. Have, I'm sorry, not green. They don't have copper cables in them at full uptime. You might be able to see, if I turn off the alt mode, you can see that the, the machine doesn't work all the time. It has a little bit of a hiccup in there. Not that that's a huge amount, but it adds up over time, and that's that's due to it not having green. And it's not because this one doesn't have green... I keep saying green. Not that it doesn't have copper wire. These The uh, long handle inserters can't move enough copper wire at a time. So these are even putting in six six at a time. Six per... Well, three per arm swing, and there's two arms moving, so that's six per arm swing. But it just it makes the makes the green circuit so fast that I just don't have enough. So that makes me think that doing bot style, I can do a setup like I have here of two rows. But instead of putting a passive provider chest on the second one, I will just do a requester chest and filter how much iron it can go into it. So that way, it's just something like this with one space there like this and we'll put a requester chest here for the iron and I'll put a requester chest here for the copper so it'll be copper and they'll feed in to make all the things I will need which will then feed into a requester chest which I can just filter out how much iron can come into here by putting hooking up the 
hooking up the the arms to read how much copper cable is in there and if there's more than a hundred I can have them just not not put more in it so that way I don't fill this completely with copper to the point where the iron can't go in there so that these ones don't make assembly machines anymore so I think that's what my plan is and I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna do that since I again have all this space up here to do things where I could do like I could do copper I mean I could do um, processing you uh, green circuits I, there's a lot of room there to do green circuits and if that proves to not be enough room for what I want to do then I will just end up making either making the mega base wider taller or just doing it off-site but I think I think it'll be okay so that's where I'm at right now and that's what I'm gonna work on until the next episode or the next hour so catch me then and hopefully by then I can have the smelting done and we will see what happens peace Hello everybody, we are making it now into 2 days and 22 hours, and if you're smart and paying attention, you'll see in the top left I have launched my first rocket just a moment ago, well my first rocket of this map, uh, working on energy weapons 7, I think that my energy weapons are going to be the big thing, because they are starting to, uh, I just went around, I'm on the process of repairing everything right now. They're starting to come in pretty heavy. I destroyed the one base on the left here, but not the one on the right. Because uh, these guys all are hooked up to the main base, so these guys all heal uh, with the repair packs from all the construction robots in base. So that's cool with me. I'm also sitting here wondering myself, why am I not doing uranium uh, in the main base here? I, I don't know. And I'm thinking that I should be doing that. I thought it was kind of cool because I wanted to use this base over here. But the bite just keep, like, biting shit, you know? So, like, I'm over here, like... Maybe now that I got it properly set up and I know where I'm going with it, it's it'll be work better. But I have all... Like, I've got... I got all this stuff now and I know how it all works, so... And I have iron in the main base anyway. So I, I think, like, doing... And then I won't have to do any weird, like, splitting like this. Like, I can use passive providers and things like this. So, like, all these... All my backup of the bad uranium here, I can just uh, put into one chest and not have to do a splitter and not have to refilter things in because I'll just put these... I'll put the outputs... And I won't have to do weird things here with, like, uh, underground belts and things like that, because I'll just have the uranium cells get fly flown over and the bad ones flown out, which will be make things easier all over. Um, I th Yeah, so I'm sitting here thinking to myself, yeah, I'm like, why the heck am I doing it this way when I could just be doing it that way? And setting up these weird b belt buffers also won't be a thing, because all this will just be done from... Uh, Again, bots. Bots, and I won't have to worry about belt buffers because they'll all be sharing the same logistical system. As far as the water, the water here is pretty okay. These are, oh, <laughs> I say the water here is pretty okay as they are currently out of water because I bet you the train that I flew in on, yep, is saying that that's blocked. That's exactly what's going on. So it's not letting any of the guys out. So, this shit does eat water up, so let's see how fast, how fast this rolls. Yeah, I mean, so that was a full, it, it ate about half of it, it eats about all the water that's coming in. So let's see how that, that gets close to full. Yep, so I need those three running almost continuously. As far as fluid wagons to to keep up with things, because this guy's about to be empty and this still isn't even full because we're we're cooking it all, you know. So, but with the main base over here, I could possibly just uh, pull water in. Same thing I'm thinking here, pulling water in from the side. I could pull water in by just expanding the mega base all the way out. It'll be a big it'll be a big uh, big project here, but I can just run this wall and run the mega base all the way to the side over here of the uh the water and just and just do do water right out of the right out of the wall and then just turn this whole half of everything right into uh um I, i'm having a hard time here speaking turn this whole half of everything into uranium processing so 
I think that's about it for this episode. I'm over here slowly setting up the smelting, but I had to go around and start healing things. I had to go launch the rocket. So I'm probably going to take my lunch break here, but I'm going to go... Uh, probably going to do that. I'm probably going to take this base and I'm just going to complete, move it all the way over to the edge of the edge of the edge of the wall over here. I have to heal up some of these guys, so I'll do that real quick while I'm thinking about it. Fill these up with fuel. So yeah, I think I think I'll just take the mega base out. Maybe move the robot ports down one more. Because if I were to move them down one more, one or two more down to the bottom line, they can all be healed by by the construction bots going on. But just take this all the way out to the water. And that'll be that. So see you in another hour. Hopefully we'll see how things play out here. Let me heal these boys. And that that's my plan, I think. So catch you then. Peace out, Cub Scout. Welcome in everybody. We are at the two day twenty-three hour mark. So almost three days. Excuse me. I am right now setting up the main base. I have extended it all the way across the water here. To well, all the way, I'm sorry, all the way across to the water here, not through it. I've got robots just putting down concrete slowly, which you can't see the notification of my camera is blocking it, which is why I put it there. But you can see here all these notifications of bots just missing construction. So I've got bots going to take away all these cliffs, take away all these rocks and trees. And I noticed, oddly enough, I was um, I put landfill here. So I'm going to just make a straight line all the way across for my water. And I put my nuclear reactors right there. Just to remember the way that I want to have them like set down. So I'll put those there, and then I'll put a line for, uh... Actually, I didn't even think about it, if that's where I want them. I probably want them a little lower, depending on where the trains come in. Probably put them down here, because I'll have a line of centrifuge processing. Then I'll have a line of centrifuge converting the bad uranium to good uranium. Then I'll have a line of, um... Well, the next line after that, once you get the good uranium, for turning them into the uranium cells really doesn't take much. I can have a few of the assembly machines just cranking out the good fuel cells. And then same, and then underneath that, so, because we can do the double like we do over here. We can fit two with two two lines of assemblage between between things, and we're going to use bots for this. So we'll have that third line be uh, assemblers turning uh, uranium into fuel cells and then turning the bad stuff into the bad fuel cells into bad uranium again. But I put this whole line here and noticed... There's a little break right here where the biters could get through. If you follow this path around, they can get through all the way around here to this landmass here. So they can sneak if things ended up being this way, that this biter base here gets aggroed in such a way that they send biters down. They will they can wiggle through all this water, sneak through here if they ended up to, and all the way up into the main mega base. Which is annoying because uh means I'll have to figure that out, which I don't want to do. And... The only thing I can hope for is some of this radar like uncovers that this water here like just comes up along the side of the island here and just this is water. That would be really cool because then I don't have to worry about that. Otherwise, I'll have to set up a weird little wall base. I'll have to set up like a weird like wall right here or I'll just end up end up um putting a line of uh I'll take this I'll take this down and expand it a little bit here and just put a line of um laser turrets. So that's all that's going on right now. I just got back in. Haven't played in a few days. Not sure where I'm leaving off. Turned all these trains to manual mode for the most part. And actually, I should probably... I'm going to go down here next. I have eight 800 some good uranium here. So that's not a big deal. I can go grab all this good uranium though. Because what? Because we we learned last time we did the centrifuge that this needs 40 to make 41. So once you get these moving, as long as you have enough to get one cycle moving, not a big deal. You have it from that point on because you're always producing one more if you set it up to in such a way that this stuff gets the priority of uranium, which is cool. So as long as this stuff is getting uranium priority, ain't no thing bad gonna happen. I will have to, I'll be able to undo all this undergrounding belt stuff too and all this. I'll be able to just use bots, which will make this uranium processing a lot easier as well. And I'll be able to just crank out a hell of a lot of power from the main base. That's what we're going to look at. The power situation. The accumulators, or um, not the assembly machines. The assembly machines and the roboports over time. The roboports are doing a hell of a amount of power just because... Uh, all the bots right now 
trying to put down all this concrete and stuff that I just don't feel like doing manually and taking away all the trees and shit that's going on there. So that's all, and that's what we're going to see happening in the next hour. So thank you very much. See you guys shortly, and uh, if you like it, check out the series. Or continue to watch the series and check it out live on YouTube. Peace. Welcome in again, everybody. We are at the three days. And I missed it by like 16 minutes because I uh, forgot to set my alarm thing. And then I was sitting here. My alarm, no, my alarm for the for the clip went off early by like 10 minutes. So I was like, ah, I'll, I'll check back in 10 minutes. And then I forgot because that's exactly what I do. I'm setting up here, though, the uranium um, in the main base. And trying to use the, the uh, requester chest and things this time so I don't have to have so many belts running around because I can just have the bots fly things around. So I think I'm going to put the good stuff in these boxes and then have this requester chest request the good stuff. I'm going to put the bad stuff in these boxes and then have this guy request the bad stuff. And this will just all be like buffer storage for the bad stuff. And we'll see if I ever if that ratio ever gets messed up where I'm not using enough bad stuff. But this way with the splitter, which we will do, output priority to the left filtering bad things. So only bad stuff comes out of this. And it'll alternate between um, both both of them. So it'll equally use processing as well as this stuff. So I think the ratio is probably fine. We'll check on that later. And then all the good stuff I will have then be uh, up in here be requested into. Or um, shit, that means this is one line too low. <laughs> That means everything's fucked up again. All right. This will be my line of making the actual fuel cells. And then I will do, up here, I will do the power part of things. Which is all cool, because it will leave me plenty of room to get plenty of water for all these steam engines. And we'll see how I want to run that, if I want to run excess steam and have it, like, hold excess steam somewhere. Probably should. That way, when I'm not using it, that I keep collecting steam, because it's probably not a bad idea to have all the steam. Uh... Because the nuclear power just keeps going either way. So I think that's what I'm going to do right now. The biters. Oh, well, look. It looks like. Yeah, this still looks like sporadic booty. I still don't know like what rhyme or reason between these bots and where they decide they want to place the concrete. But yeah. Uh, biters are starting to get back to tearing up things. And I'm finding where I've left things off. But they... Um, the new amount of pollution spawns behemoth biters now. I don't think I have any biters anywhere on the minimap where I can even look. Nothing in radar range that I can look. But they're spawning behemoths now, which are... Here we go. Really actually can get through a lot of stuff and can really start tearing up the base again. So I've got half my energy weapon damage going. Because I'm just waiting on another locket. Locket to launch. Rocket to launch. I'm at 60 out of 100, so I'm 60% through the uh, another rocket, and when I get that next rocket going, that'll give me the other 1,000 to do Energy Weapon 8, which will hopefully help me take down the biters and keep things really cranking out. So I think this is properly set up, though, and soon I will be able to have um, things working the way that I should. And I can really crank up some uranium power over here and then, and then move everything basically to the mega base and take down the rest of the stuff over here. So this has all been picked up. All I have to do is go pick up these nuclear reactors and set up water that way. When I pick everything up and bring it back over, I'll have plenty of um, uh, places to do everything. So, And set up the stations. I guess i got to set up the stations over here. That's the only other part. So that's where we are in this hour. Hopefully I can just quick fix that up. And I have to also set up my defense here for... Keeping them out of this side of things, because that's going to be a pain in the buns, too. Ooh, spice! Whoa! Huge raid. So, yeah, guys, I will end the clip there, and we will check back in an hour. Peace.